Today we're correcting the timing on a Viking 6460 sewing machine. Jack is actually going to do it and demonstrate while I film because he's the one of us that is better at this stuff. This is the process described on page 90 of the 6000 series service manual. It may help to see a demo even though the manual is quite good. Since the manual covers the 6000 series, we think this process is much alike on all similar machines, but this is the only one we have in hand, so I can't swear to you that that is so. Alright, we're going to go back to the lowest position of the needle. And what we've done is put a hemostat with a black indicator, which is a twist tie. Very fancy. Very fancy. But it tells us exactly where the needle position is relative to the frame base. Because we don't have their spring-loaded guide. Mm -mm. But it's now sitting on 14 millimeters. And so we're supposed to raise the needle 2.5. Right. So there's 15 right there. 16 right there and a half. So that's and at how far this it point the hook is supposed to be centered on the needle. Right. The hook tip right there should be centered on the back of the needle and it's not and it is not so we have to go in the back and loosen the rod and move this back into position and it's loose that's the silver screw there are right. three screws described two black and one silver right there's black screw number one Now what we saw is the silver screw is the one that's exposed <clears throat> when we're in the position for setting this. <clears throat> that's why they said take the silver screw and swap it with one of the black screws. And I'll show you why. I wish you would because that leaves me confused. Alright, there's a black screw coming out. And just a precautionary thing <clears throat> if you have a magnet in position when the screw comes out it grabs it see that's a flat tip flat ended screw right there mm -hmm. <clears throat> is the silver screw different it's tipped uh -huh. now we're going to snug this one just a little bit so it holds everything like we want it there you go now we're going to pull the silver screw out. Now see, look at the needle plunge. See, the needle's at its lowest position and starts back up. And the silver screw is what's exposed. Right. So this is the one we need to be able to loosen in order to adjust the bar like we want it. See, there's a tip on that one this tip bites the rod. Okay. So, every time this screw goes in, it wants to go back into the position it was in the last time so that that tip goes into the hole that it made. So, if we put a black screw in there... That's it, why they tell you to right. switch so it won't slide into its old evil ways. That's right. So, it won't assume the position that it was in. So you realize there's a tang right there on this hook assembly and it has to go into a slot right here on the carrier. So that's how you know it's properly lined up. Now here we go again. Needle in the operating position. It's going to go down to its lowest setting. There it goes. And now it's going to start back up again from there. So here we go. Our super high tech <laughs> indicator. And again, it's right on 
I'm going to flex. See, this is why it's super high tech, because you can flex it. <laughs> it's also why it can totally fail you. you got to be careful. Right. you got to not touch it. Now it's on 14 again. So we're going to rotate in the direction of the operation of the machine until we get to 15, 16, and a half. And a half, right there. Now, the hook should be right there just in the middle of the needle, and it is not. So what we've got to do is stand on our heads, reach around the back. <laughs> See, we, we want to leave the machine laying down because... So, so nothing moves over yeah, no, where well, you just set it. We don't want this hook assembly to fall out and nothing's holding it in right now. Right. But if you put the cover on, you can't see the tip of the hook very clearly. Right. So... You have to know where you're reaching for, I guess. Yes, you do. You can actually do it like this, which I'm fixing to do. And then you can clearly see the black screw that we put in the position of the silver screw right there. And we're going to loosen it. Like that. And then hopefully we can move this without moving, there it goes, without moving the needle. So you just grabbed hold of the center of the hook assembly and twisted slightly, is that right? Yes, that's exact. Because what we... I did was I, let me lay this down where I can show you. I pressed it into its seat, that dark brown plastic. Pressed it into its seat so that I'm rotating the seat by the hook assembly and now I'm going to do it again. See, I'm moving it away from the needle. Now I'm moving it back until the hook. Now you see there's a little bit of play in that. So you have to be careful that it's sitting where it's supposed to sit. See, I'm moving it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm not moving the carrier. All right, now I'm in a position where I can see it's just about in the middle of the hook. The hook, the hook is, is in the, in the, the middle, middle of, of the needle. needle. Right. I'm going to come over here in your way. Right, go ahead. So that everybody can see. It does look like it to me, too. Okay. So now you tighten the screws, right? That's right. Now we go back around the back. Hoping nothing jiggles. Well, we're going to very carefully hold it in place. Reach right there. We're going to snug this, then we're going to go back and look and see what's going on in the front. Absolutely. But see, if the silver screw was in there, it would just go right back into its regular position. The one where it rode where, in before. Right, where it had a dimple made, and you, your timing would not be changed at all. Now, we go back around and you look and see if you think it's in the middle of the needle still. I would say that it is. Okay. So, right now, with the needle going up, see this little arm right here, hasn't started its trip back up again. When it starts up, it takes the slack out of the thread mm -hmm. that's run through here. So, right now, the needle has started up and this is not on its trip yet. So, there's still a loop of thread where the needle stretched it down and the needle and started back up. And there is supposed to be for the bobbin to catch, but with right. that hook in the wrong position, it won't work. It wasn't happening right. every time. In fact, considering how much my hook was off, I'm surprised I was getting about half of the stitches to catch. Right. And I would have thought maybe none. Well, now let's go in the back. and All right, This is where the silver screw should be. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is come around to the other black screw. And we're going to tighten it within an inch of its life. Very snug. Right. So that it cannot move on the shaft. 
So that's going to hold the adjustment in position, is that right? That is correct. This is holding the timing adjustment. Oops. Uh-oh, did that No, slip? no, 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 it didn't. It moved the rod, but it moved everything like it should have. Okay, so and that just you means tell, you already had snugged it right, up. The way you can tell is out of the corner of my eye, I can see the needle move now when the... Okay. When it's rotating now. Well, before we close This it is up. the position for the other black screw because we pulled it out of there and put it in where the silver screw is. So we come around here. We put them all back where they originally right. were. Right. So, yeah, this is the one that we tightened to set the timing. Now we're going to pull it out and put it back in its original position. I've gotten confused. Right. This is not the one you most recently snugged up. No. Okay. No. This is the one in the silver position that you are exposed to when you're setting the timing. Okay. And we did not want the dimpled screw to be... See how handy that magnet is? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is a, the position for the silver screw. There's the one we tightened to within an inch of its life to lock things in. So position. it stays where it is, right? Right. Now, this is with the position for the other black screw. So you just removed it from its temporary home in the silver position. Right. If you can get close enough or zoom. Can you point to it with something? Jack's trying to show you where there has been a dimple. If you look in that hole right there, and I'll lean it back just a hair so the light gets in it, you'll see there's a dimple on the shaft in there. Okay. I can't tell if it really shows or not. I think you can see it. It's an area that looks kind of bumpy, not smooth, and the rest of the shaft is smooth. Am I right? That, that is correct. You are seeing a dimple that was created by that... And it's not, Bring the camera over this way some. It was created by the wrong position. Right. That is correct. Now what happens next, though? We put the silver screw in and we're hoping it dimples in the right position? Well, we're going to put it in and we're going to tighten it very carefully, but it's only got one spot it can go into because we've tightened those other two screws. It cannot move the collar to accommodate itself. It has to go straight in. Okay. There's the silver screw's little point. And it's not much of a point, and we only want it to touch the shaft. We don't really need it to gouge the shaft, it just needs to touch it. So we're going to start it in very carefully and let it... We'll be able to feel when it touches the shaft with the screwdriver. See, I'm two-fingering this. Is that purposely to yeah, handle yeah, it gently? Very, very soft. Now it's touched the shaft, and I can feel that. Okay. Because it wants to stop. So you just let it stop? We're going to give it two fingers of tension, just like that. Now it's where it needs to be. Right, we're testing, but here's what we're looking at. That is the eye of the needle right there. Uh-huh. All right, so this is where the thread was pulled down. Now the needle started back up again, so the loop is going to be right behind the needle. And look where our hook is. Oh, and it should be pushing the bobbin thread right into the loop. Well, actually what it's doing is the hook is catching the loop of the needle thread. It's going to pull it around, and it's going to right. slip the casing and it's going to catch the bobbin thread when it slips the casing. And that's what makes your loop. Lock stitch is a miraculous thing. Yeah, it is. But I think we're there. Okay. So here we're testing with real live stitching. And it is not missing a single stitch, just as it should be. I did have some puckering. Turns out that we accidentally disarranged the tension while working on it. So obviously I had to put it back where it belongs. And now we're testing zigzag and that's working great too.